<laughs> Pretty much. Y'all ready for this? Oh, y'all ready for this? Yosh. Winners don't lose. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to our channel that has a name. And that name is... Never Stop Shooting! <laughs> I am James, this is Paul. Well, I'm gonna stop introducing you, you can, you can do your ah, Who cares? I mean, we've been doing this for months now, and we still haven't gotten an intro down yet, so... <laughs> at that point, it's like, ah, whatever. Well, we need more subscribers, and we'll hammer down the intro. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Get us more subscribers, and we'll do intros properly. <laughs> And today we're going to be playing King's Quest by Telltale Games. I was a big fan of uh, King's Quest when I first started playing the, video games. Yeah, the old King's Quest series. Where yeah. Where had you wandering randomly in the desert for hours looking for the way, right way through, even though... It was only King's Quest V. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I had a hard time doing that one with the internet helping me. Hmm. Should have done that one with a book. Well, you know what it was is uh, was it Sierra? By Sierra the way, that, that right? yep, yeah, Sierra that did that. His name is Graham. Oh yeah, he's not yet a king. Um, they had those tip lines. There's no way you can get money on your tip line unless you make the game so ridiculously difficult that people need help with the game. Yeah, that's what the uh, old Sierra games used to be. It's insanity hard. We we played uh we played Space Quest Five. That was a Sierra game. Yeah, and Sierra games also suck too because they have a lot of bugs. Now, did I see the Sierra logo at the front of this one too? You did. I didn't realize Sierra was still a company at this I've point. I've not been back there in years. I don't think they are. The last place left to look. So, why is the logo there? Maybe they're just paying homage to Sierra. It, it could be. It could be that, like, Telltale bought the rights to the brand name, so to speak. By the way, if you guys are all confused as to what's going on, don't worry. That's actually fairly normal. That's how this starts. And uh, it should also be noted that James and I have both played uh, this game before, so it's not like we're going into this blind at all. We should know what we're doing. Well, and, until we get to a certain point, and then we're going to be like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't even know if we're going to do a walkthrough on this one, but we might just for time's sake. Yeah. Uh-oh. Dinner Dinner bell. ready. So, yeah, King's Quest. It was not exactly oh. as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. As uh, as James was telling me before, that's actually the voice of uh, the guy that played Doc Brown. Do you know Do you know the actor's name off the top of your head? No, Christopher Lloyd. I guess I do. <laughs> no, I do not, Paul. It was Christopher Lloyd who played that <laughs> character. I didn't check my phone or anything. <laughs> so yeah, uh, here we are. It's beautiful, beautiful art. Telltale has kind of taken Too over. Odd contraptions guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. Telltale's kind of taken over the point-and-click adventure with more... I decided this was no time to take a nap, even though that bed looked very squishy and very comfortable. Telltale has kind of taken over the point-and-click adventure games, even though, uh, you know, they don't really go with the point-and-click anymore uh, so much as they do just more the adventure uh, aspect of it. Go ahead. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. Um, ouch. Well, and that's what would have happened if I turned the left switch. But since I am here... <laughs> I love story, that. You already know that I pulled the right one. That's a, that's a great way to, uh, to do stuff like that. Yep, possible deaths. And I love that they kept the deaths in here. It wouldn't be as good of a game if they didn't have the deaths. Right, if the character hadn't said, instead said, if I had pulled that switch, a mattress would have come down and killed me. Mm. Wouldn't be nearly as good as, you know, what they have going on here. Yeah, so... Pockets, barrels, butter churns, and beds were jammed in every nook and cranny of that cave. So who do you think it built the cave? It seems so familiar. Who do I think built the cave? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't tell you. 
Anyways, you saying? Uh, yeah, the point-and-click genre, for the most part, is uh, is no longer really a thing, which is which is fine, because Telltale has kind of taken. It's phasing through my body. Are you sure you're not just in the wrong spot? Yeah, I'm trying to get hit by Even it. Even though the bed was very comfortable, this was no time to hide under the covers. Uh, they have taken sort of like the soul of uh, point-and-click adventure games, what people found wait, really wait, wait. interesting on, and Grandma. good about adventure games. I don't remember this part. Sorry. And that's what they're... Um... Beds hanging from stalactites? We'll get there, Gwendolyn. Don't worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. That's what now, they held on to instead that? of the antiquity ah, yes. of the old As I uh, treaded through the river of rumbling troubles, yeah. I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Do you know why they have all the beds there? I just figured it out after going through this three times. I, 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 I remember there was something that clued me into it when I was playing, but I can't remember now what that was. It might have something to do with the fact that the dragon is sleeping. It might have something to do with the fact that it's a bedtime story. There was something that I was like, oh, is that why they were using it? No, I'll tell you why. Why? Because this dragon creates a lot of noise in a cave like this, especially since it has an open outside. Yes. Beneath a slumbering Those beds pile of provide teeth, something to abs absorb all the sound, oh, okay. so allowing the dragon to live there in peace. Well, dragons are my favorite. You want to tell this part? Yes. King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest. To yeah, he is a knight right now. Mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to. in my way to. <laughs> my way to add a shinier hat to my collection. Oh, look at that rope. Okay. And I mean, uh, yeah, there's. We come back here at some point, right? Or we. We not will. Back here necessarily, because this happened after some of the stuff that actually I tried happened to in the game. That crazy contraption, yeah. But it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating you see, some silly, silly conundrum. Yeah. See, the thing is, with these games, this one's not told in order. Mm. So, right now, it's at about, oh, I'd say about half the story I've seen so far. Yeah, neither of us have actually completed the game. We've both just played through, like, the first chapter-ish, or first two chapters or something. First little bit, yeah. So, the missing handle was booby-trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. That's not using your cleverness, that's just hoping yeah, for the I best. I used my cleverness to hide. <laughs> Under the covers. Pretty much. Is there a safer place to hide from monsters? I think not. Uh, maybe. Okay. So that the dragon can live in peace, you say, but the dragon is chained up. Oh, right, but that was us that did that, wasn't it? No. Us past us. No. No? Luckily, okay. that half blinded we we, we don't know exactly me. why this dragon is here. Must be right. really hard to does it have... An arrow. It doesn't have any lessons, sort of a horn, does it? Hit a hay bale. It does. It, it does. Is yeah, and we'll see it here in a, a moment. Okay. For skilled archers. The dragon does have a horde, but it looks like somebody's been taking care of the dragon. I tried dragon. to turn that crazy mm. option, but yeah, it was yeah, yeah. missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly Because why would all this be what here if you... somebody... Somebody did this. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> all of this, uh... <coughs> all of this stuff making it, uh, making it difficult to go places. Into a place where humans can get... Would you, if you were the king... And you had managed to trap a dragon. Would you have it killed, or would you use it as a um, gigantic switch as a trial for oh. like knights and stuff like that? I wouldn't have it killed, but I wouldn't use it as a trial for knights. What would you do if you had a dragon? What would you do with it? Well, if I had a dragon, I'd probably use it. Oof, that that thing on top is making me nervous. But uh, I'd probably use it for. Uh... After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon so went back to snoring. I probably sleep huh, all day neat. too. 
if Amira was my only friend. What would you do with a dragon? I hadn't answered you yet. I know. That's why I was reiterating the question. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, essentially, I'd use it to guard treasure. The problem with using a dragon to guard treasure is that it's also being guarded from you. Right? You've got to you got to find a way to uh, to actually get it out again, too. Yeah. And I mean, kingdoms usually have treasuries exactly for that purpose. Um, maybe not that way. After I was impaled by that spiky bed, I took a nap and decided the magic mirror could wait another evening before being <laughs> rescued. Grandpa. Well, I thought maybe it was your bedtime, <laughs> but I can continue. Sorry, I will be killing myself on purpose just to hear what he says. <laughs> Oh. So I feel like there is a practical use for a dragon. Obviously, trying to tame it to make it a... Um, a dragon you can fly on? Yeah, or to make it a part of your army sort of thing is mm -hmm. only going to end in tears. Like, yeah. Kind of like the uh, the Russians. They, uh, they designed... Well, they used um, behavioral conditioning to create dogs uh, that would run underneath tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, they put a bunch of food underneath their tanks and train the dogs that like this is where you find food sort of thing and they starve the dogs and then they would strap a bomb to the uh, strap a bomb to the dog with a little antenna on it that when the antenna was bent when it went under a tank it would blow up and they thought we'll take out the German tanks this way. That's and, actually um, pretty clever. It is except for the fact that they didn't have any German tanks to condition them to use uh, to to run under only their own Russian tanks. So it didn't work. And so when they sent the dogs out onto the battlefield, the dogs looked at the Russian tanks, looked at the German tanks... Oh, I tanks, am about to get eaten. ...and then ran at the, uh, ran at the uh, Russian tanks. And they ended up having to... Uh, having to shoot the dogs before they blew up their own tanks. Wait oh, that's terrible. Does this mean our family's immortal? <laughs> um, yes. Yes, it does. So yeah, it didn't exactly work out for them, and I feel like, again, having a dragon on your army wouldn't work out the way that it does in a lot of movies and TV shows and books and stuff like that. Well, it all depends on what you think you can do with it, and that, that's why I was having trouble answering your questions. What do oh. you do with it? Yeah. Especially since dragons are, you know, in many uh, lores, very selfish creatures. Well, why couldn't you just use it like a... Oh, come on. No, keep... No, yeah. Well, why couldn't you just use it like one of those evil people uses uh, sharks? Dragon right. pen, just throw people in every once in a while. We are going to continue this conversation, guys, next time on Never Stop Shooting. Make sure to like and subscribe, and until we see you then, be excellent to one another. Keep those guns in the air. Sorry about that. No, it's all good.